Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the ATI T Study Manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 170, and we are on page 100. We are in the process of solving problems from the test number three, which they refer to as quiz, and which we are referring as quiz uh, test number three. The first two tests appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition, and you will find the solutions to the, all the questions in the first two tests. Test number one from day number 61 through 70, and test two from 71 through 80, if you're interested in them. As a matter of fact, you will find the solutions to all the problems that appeared in the previous edition, the fifth edition, from day number one through 80, in the event that you wish to avail yourself to them. Let's get going. Problem number nine. What's going on in problem number nine? It's important that you have the book in front of you. It makes it easier if you read the problem yourself because the problems tend to be very, uh, very verbose and uh, I'm not in the mood to stand here and read them verbatim. Do you understand? So what's going on here is that I'm going to paraphrase as, as best as I can. We have a DJ here who's playing her CDs uh, and she has a hold all of her CDs that she owns, a DJ on a shelf next to her computer and we are told the shelf is one foot long. So she stores, this is problem number nine, and we are told that she stores her CDs on a one foot long shelf. So far so good. We are simply being asked How many CDs can be stored? Actually, we're not, we're not being asked how many CDs can be stored. The question is goes something like this. So she has the shelf which is full of CDs from one end to the other, completely jam-packed, completely filled up. And the question is, how long can she go, how many hours she can go playing the songs continuously from each of these CD consecutively without inter uh, uh, skipping any CDs? until she reaches a point where she gets to the end of the shelf and now she has to repeat a song. She doesn't want to repeat a song. How many hours can she play her song without having to repeat a song? Which, in order to figure out that question, we have to first figure out how many CDs can be stored on the, on the shelf and how long each CD is. And that is that's going to give us the answer as to how far she can go. But here's the thing. She doesn't want to actually sit there and do the precise calculation. She just wants an estimation. So our job is to just estimate. Let's look at answer choice A. Answer choice A says that uh, foot long, foot long would hold about 100 CDs. And each CD we are told, each CD is an hour long and therefore they come to conclusion or rather she comes to conclusion she, that she can uh, play uh, uninterrupted uh, without having to repeat any song for 100 hours. What's wrong with this thing? What's wrong with answer choice A? So what's wrong with it? it is that she's just guessing. She's just guessing that it holds about 100 CD. It's just a guess. We are not being asked to make a guess, we are being, we are being asked to make an estimate. There is a difference between a guess and an educated guess. An educated guess is an estimate, not a wild guess. This is just a guess. This is just a guess. We have to do better than that. Let's look at answer choice B. Answer choice B says that one case, one case is one and a quarter inch thick. One and a quarter inch thick. And we are told, if that's the case, if one case is one and a quarter inch thick, that implies, that implies that a space of one inch will hold four CDs. If one case of CD is a quarter of an inch thick, then one, and then that stands to reason that in, that, that in one inch space, we should be able to store four CDs. So far so good. 
Let's carry on. We also know, we also know that one foot, one foot is equal to 12 inches. One foot is equal to 12 inches. We know that one page holds four series. If one foot is equal to 12 inches, that, it, that implies that in one foot space can hold 48 CDs. 48 CDs. And that's all it says. It, it says nothing more than that. It says nothing more than that. Let me make sure that I don't miss anything. One, one, whole, one case holds, one case is about one quarter inch thick. One foot of shelf would hold 48 CDs estimate about 48 hours and then she goes on to say then she goes on to make a conclusion that she can play for 48 hours without having to repeat a song but how does she know that how does she know that we do not know how long each CD is how long each CD is does each CD contain songs containing only 10 minutes or 20 minutes or half an hour or an hour or it's a five hour CD how long are each CDs we need to know the we need to know the length of each CD in terms of time before we can conclude that it's 48 hours. Nowhere in this in these calculations uh, we are told that a CD, an, each CD is one hour long. That's what's wrong with it. There is no time frame here. We do not know how long it is CD. I, how long? I mean, I don't mean the length of the CD. I mean, I mean how long is it in terms of time? If we were told that each CD place for one hour, then we could conclude that we will have enough material to go on for 48 hours without having to repeat any song. Answer choice B is wrong also. A was wrong also. Let's look at C. Let's look at C. It says, answer choice C says, the three cases take up one inch. We know that one foot is made up of 12 inches. If one foot is made up of 12 inches, then that implies if three cases make up one inch and one, one foot is 12 inches, that implies that we have 12 times 3 or 36 CDs. She can store 36 CDs. She can store 36 CDs. Then they go on to tell us, then they go on to tell us that each CD is approximately 80 minutes. Ah, now we are in business. Each CD is approximately 80 minutes. Now we can estimate the time as to how long she can go without having to repeat a song. Let's do the calculation on the top. Now when I say let's do the calculation, we're not going to actually do the calculation. That's the whole bloody point here. What we can, all we're going to do is make an estimate, an educated guess. Let's do it on the top. So, we know that we can have 36 CDs, 36 CDs, and each CD is 80 minutes long. Each CD is 80 minutes long, 80 minutes per CD. You see this CD at the bottom is going to cancel out that CD, and what we're left on the top is the minute, are the minutes rather. And this is going to represent the amount of time in minutes, we want it in hours, divide this number of minutes by 60 because there are 60 minutes in one hour. I'm going to do it in a different color so you can see this now. So this this unit of CD, units have to cancel out. This CD is going to cancel out this CD because it's minute per CD. And then this unit of minute is going to cancel out with this and this hour is going to end up on the top. And that's what we need because it's, because it's at the bottom here. So let's do the calculation. I'm explaining too much here. Let's do it here. What do you see here? Do you see anything at all? Well, first thing I notice is that we have a zero here and we have a zero here. Let's divide top and bottom. Let's divide the top and bottom by 10. If we divide top and bottom by 10, the zero is going to go away. Then we see, we see a 6 here and we see a 36 here. And we know the 6, 6 or 36. Let's divide top and bottom by 6. 6 goes away and 36 is going to become 6. And that's it. There is nothing left on the bottom. So the final answer is 6 times 8, well 6 times 8 is 48. 48, 48 what? Hippos, monkeys or bananas? The answer is hours because that's what we have for the unit. 48 hours. And that's actually a very good job. That's actually a very good method of making a quiz estimation as to how long you can go without interruption.
48 hours. I would say this is this is this is so far is pretty good. This so far looks pretty good. C is the answer so far. Let's look at answer choice D. Perhaps they do a better job in D. Let's take a look at D. But so far C is the contender. A and B are knocked out. Let's look at D. I need the room, so we're going to erase everything. What's, what's going on in D? It says, this is how the D goes. D says that one case, one case is 10.2 millimeter. Well, as soon as you start out with bloody 10.2 millimeters as opposed to simply 10 millimeters, you know you're not estimating. That's not an estimation. That's a precise calculation. Then they go on to tell us, then they make it even better. They go on to tell us that one foot is exactly 304.8 millimeters. So, we have, since, since one foot is made up of 304.8 millimeters and each case is 10.2 10.2 millimeters in each case again the units the units are going to cancel out the millimeter is going to cancel out with the millimeter and CD is going to end up on the top this should say CD not case a CD or perhaps it was the case it was the case and of course each case will hold the CD but how do you go about doing this thing 304 divided by 304.8 divided by 10.2, you can't do it by hand. You cannot just estimate it by hand. You're going to have to use the calculator. So if you pick up the calculator, you will find that this works out to be, this works out, works out to be 29.88235 cases. Now I'm not sure if it goes on a little bit or if that's the end of it. I don't remember it anymore in the calculator, which they estimate as 30 cases. And then we are told that each case, each case is, each CD, each case, whatever it is, 76 minutes and 17 seconds. 76 minutes and 17 seconds. And if you multiply 76, if you multiply 76 by 60, 76 by 60 to convert this into second plus the 17, it works out to be. 4,577 seconds for a CD. That's how many seconds we have per CD. I need the room. And since we have established, since we have established that we have 30 CDs, we take our 4,577 seconds per CD and multiply it by 30 CDs. And CDs are going to cancel out, and we end up at 4,577 times 30. Again, you need the calculator, and you will find that it is 13,137,310 1, seconds, which works out to be 2,288.5 2, minutes, which in turn works out to be about 38 hours. They finally arrive at the case that it is about 38 hours, which is fine and dandy. But that wasn't a bloody estimation. That was calculation. There's a lot of calculations here. And you cannot do it by hand. You're going to need a calculator. When you start using silly things like so many seconds, I forget now where we wrote down so many minutes and 17 seconds and 10.2 millimeters and 304.8 millimeter. That's not, a, that's not an estimation. That's what's wrong with D. What is wrong with D is that what is wrong with answer choice D is that it ain't an estimation. Yes, I said ain't. That's how excited it gets me. It doesn't happen very often. But uh, if you start talking in such silly manner, then obviously people are going to get excited and they're going to end up informing you that that ain't an estimation. That's a precise calculation. The answer is C. Now here's the last part I'm going to do. If you did want to do question is, if you did want to go about estimating by the figures that they give us, how would you go about it? Can we estimate? Can we do an estimation by the figures that are given to us in answer choice D? Let's see how it's done. So this was calculation. We're not going to calculate. We're going to estimate actually. Answer, answer, is, answer choice D is wrong. 
because they are making calculation. Now we're going to see how to go about doing an estimation. Okay, keep in mind that they came up with the answer of about 38 hours. Let's do the estimation and we'll see how to do the estimation, shall we? Let's do the estimation. So here we go. Each CD, we're still working on D, but now we're going to show how to actually estimate. Each CD, I cannot spell anything. Each CD, we are told, is 10.2 millimeter thick. Well, let's just pretend that it's 10 millimeter. That's our first estimation. You with me? We are also told that one foot is 304.8 millimeter. Let's just estimate that as 300 millimeter. That makes life very simple. That makes life very simple. 300 millimeters is one foot. Each CD is 10 millimeter. That implies that we can hold, we can hold 30 CDs. So far, so good. That was very simple. You see, 300 millimeter divided by 10 millimeter. I'm not going to actually do it out. It's 30 CDs. They go on to tell us that each CD, each CD, is 76 minutes and 17 seconds. Let's just pretend it is 76 minutes. Keep it simple. So now we can do our calculation. We're going to do it on the top because I don't want to do it way at the bottom. So here's how the calculation is going to go. And when we say calculation, we're not going to actually calculate, we're going to estimate. And this is how it's going to go. We already established that we, have, we can hold 300 CDs on the shelf because each CD is 10 millimeter thick and we have a space for 300 millimeters. So if we have room for 300 millimeters, if one foot is 300 millimeter long and each CD is 10 millimeters thick, we can hold 30 CDs on the shelf. That we have already established. So let's begin. So we have 30 CDs, we already know that. We also know that there are 76 minutes per CD. And we also know, we also, see this is in minutes. We don't want, we don't want the answer in minutes, we want it in hours. So we need to get rid of this minutes, the unit of minutes. So minutes are going to go at the bottom and the hour is going to go on the top. And we know that one hour has 60 minutes. You see that? We are done. Now we can do our calculation and we are done. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. First we can cancel out the units. I see a CD here, I see CD here, that unit kills away. What unit, what other unit cancels out? Well, we see, we see minute here on the top and we see minute here. And we are left with the unit that we need, which is 76. Let's get going, see what we can do. The first thing we notice here is that this ends in a zero and that ends in a zero. Since they both end in a zero, since they both end in a zero, 60 ends in a zero and 30 ends in a zero, let's divide top and bottom by 10. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 3 goes away and 6 goes away, 6 is going to become 2. We're almost done. Now we have to divide 76 by 2. How many 2's does 7 have? 7 has 3 2's. 7 has 3 2's. 3 2's are 6. 3 2's are 6. After we take away 6 from the 7, we have a remainder of 1. What happens to that 1? That 1 goes and joins the 6 and becomes a 16. And 16 has 8. 8 2's. There you go, we are done. 38 hours. That's the way the estimation should have been done. Not the bloody method that they described, because that was a precise calculation. And they spend, we end up spending so much time doing the precise calculation, and towards the very end, the very last step, they actually estimated it anyway at the 38 hours. But that wasn't the right way of going about it. That wasn't an estimation. That was calculation. Let's do problem number 10. Problem number 10 is very straightforward, very simple. In problem number 10, we are told that 1.5 ounces of powder, 1.5 ounces of powder makes 16 ounce drink. The question is, if we have 64 ounces of powder, if, if we have 64 ounces of powder, 
that is going to make how many ounces of drink? So we're dealing with powder and ounces. Let's set it up as a proportion and we are done. Let's set it up as a proportion and we are done. So it doesn't matter which one you put on the top, it makes no difference. I'm going to put powder on the top and the liquid, the liquid, the drink rather, drink in ounces on the top, on the bottom rather. They are both, and we have to specify the units. Not that it makes any difference, but they are both in ounces. They are both in ounces. So we know that 1.5 ounces, we know that 1.5 ounces gives us 16 ounces of drink. The question is, if I have 64 ounces of powder, 64 ounces of powder, how much drink can I make? How many ounces? That's, that's what we need to solve here, this part right here. Let's do it on the top. Cross multiply, cross multiply, 1.5 times x, 1.5 times x, cross multiply, you're going to get 16 times 64. 16 times 64. And therefore x would equal, x would equal 16 times 64 over 1.5. I think I'm going to change this marker. It's very light. I'm going to change it. And hopefully the next one that I pick up is going to be a little bit better. Now here is the tricky part. Okay, watch, watch what happens. 1.5 and 16, that's very annoying, isn't it? It's very annoying. We're going to estimate it. We're not going to do the precise. We're going to estimate it. We're going to estimate it like this. 16 times 64. And on the top, it says 1.5. Let's pretend it is 1.6. Let's pretend it is 1.6. 16 divided by 1.6 is 10 because 10 times 1.6 is 16. So we can divide top and bottom. We can divide top and bottom by 10. Or rather, we can divide top and bottom by 1.6. 16 divided by 1.6 is 10. So divide one top and bottom by 1.6 and 16 becomes 10. And we end up with 60, 10 times 64, which is 640. What allows us to take such liberties? What allows us to estimate 1.5 as 1.6? What allows us to take some such liberties? And the answer is the way the answers are presented to us. If you look at the answer choices, question number 10, take a look at take a quick look at the answer choices. It's always a good idea to pay attention to the answer choices if you're taking multiple choice questions. Because how much work you put into a question is dictated by how far apart the answer choices are. And the answer choices are 0.3 ounces, 6 ounces, 682 ounces, a thousand ounces. They are far, far apart. Pick an answer choice that comes closest to 640 that we came up with and the answer that comes closest to 640 is answer choice C which says 682. The answer is C because that's the one that came closest to what we came up with. They are so far apart that you can take such, such liberties. It's, it's a very simple multiple choice exam. You don't have to do precise calculation. Learn to estimate. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.